Hi, Douglas Simonson here coming to you from not Mexico today, but Nebraska. I'm back in the U.S. for a couple of weeks. And today I'm going to show you a crosshatch drawing demonstration. I'm going to be doing a nude of Fabian. <music> gotten some feedback from students of drawing about my usual method of showing time-lapse videos. They said they would really like to see how I drew cross-hatching in real time. So in this video I'm going to be showing you a lot of that and I hope it's helpful as you refine your cross-hatching technique. But first a little background on the model I'm going to be drawing today. This is Fabian, a 22 year old, well he was 22 when he modeled for me, fitness trainer and acrobat. I met him at my gym. We got to be friends and so I asked him if he'd be interested in modeling. He was and we did a photo shoot at my then apartment in Puerto Vallarta. He was a little shy at first but uh, he eventually relaxed and he turned out to be a great model. At one point I had him peel an orange and eat it one slice at a time and that produced some great images including this one which is the one I'm going to be drawing from today. As you know, if you're a follower of my videos, I usually transform the reference image using a series of Photoshop filters. I do this to reduce the amount of detail and also to turn the continuous tones into separate areas of light and dark so you can see clearly how it steps from light to dark and dark to light. And this makes it a lot easier to paint from or to draw from. The drawing paper I'm using is Strathmore. It's from a roll I bought either on uh, Amazon or Dick Blick, I don't remember which. But I like buying it in a roll because then I can cut it to the size I want. And it allows me to make pretty large drawings if I want to. All that said, any good quality drawing paper that has a smooth finish will work well for this kind of cross action. What about the pencils I'm using on this drawing? I'm going to be switching between four different pencils. The one in the bottom is a 2B and that's the softest, darkest lead I will use on this drawing. The yellow one is just a regular everyday number 2 pencil. The 2B is considerably darker and softer than the number 2. These two are the ones you'll see me use the most in this drawing demonstration. Then we've got that uh, third one which is dark blue and gray. That's an HB. It's harder than the number two. And the one at the top is the hardest lead of all, and that's a 4H. You'll see I'm using the softest lead, the 2B, a lot right at the beginning because I like to put in the darkest darts first. You could do the whole drawing with a medium hardness pencil like a number two, but with the different hardnesses I'm using, it's a lot easier to get a nice range of lights and darks without having to be so careful about your pencil pressure. I like working from a computer screen because then I can easily zoom in on the area I'm working on. But if you've got a printer, it also works to print out the image. And I suggest printing out a close-up version of the area you're working on. The main thing is just to have a good, easy-to-see reference image. If you're used to my time-lapse videos, this is going to seem really slow to you. But I wanted you to see the actual speed of my cross-hatching. There really is a rhythm to it. And it takes focus because you want to lay down each group of lines at an angle that will work with what you've already laid down. You're building up these layers and you want to build them up evenly. And you've got to do it with confidence, which is why the more you practice your cross-hatching, the more beautiful it will get. As usual, values are everything. You really have to pay attention to the values, and by that I mean the lights and darks. I look at the reference image beforehand and I kind of map out in my mind where are the darkest areas and where are the lightest areas and where are the in-betweens. So as I start working, I already have a good idea where I'm going to need the softest pencil and where I'm going to need the lightest pencil, etc.
With this kind of cross hatching, keeping your pencil sharp is a real must. I'm sharpening my pencils a lot. I have a great old hand crank manual pencil sharpener which works really well for my purposes. This is a Carl, C-A-R-L, that's the brand, and I really recommend it. I'll put a link in the description. But whatever kind of pencil sharpener you use, use it often. You want to make sure to keep a nice sharp point on your pencil. That's really important with the kind of cross hatching I do. Notice I'm working all over the drawing and not finishing any one area. I do the same thing when I'm painting. You're always going to get a better result this way than finishing one area at a time and then moving on to the next one. When you move all over the drawing and keep the level of finish about the same everywhere, you've got a much better shot at keeping the tone and feel of the piece consistent throughout. I also like this approach with a crosshatch drawing because I often want to leave some areas unfinished. And when I'm working all over the drawing, then I have a better feel for where I should just leave it alone. When I do leave a portion of the body unfinished, I like to add some tone around it to define its edges. That kind of emphasizes it and makes it clear that it was left unfinished on purpose. It also makes it seem three-dimensional, even though there's very little of the actual form really defined at all. And it's done. I worked on this drawing in 45 minute to one hour sessions over a period of several days, I think about a week. I call it Orange Juice, and you can see it now in the members only section of my website. And that's it for today. I hope you cross-hatching enthusiasts got some good tips that you can use to help refine your technique and get better at cross-hatching. And remember, I have an ebook on my website called Secrets of Cross-Hatching. There's a G-rated and an X-rated version. And you can download that and get even more in-depth tips and more uh, concise explanations of how I do cross-hatching and how you can practice it to get better at it. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to my channel. And if you watched today and you got a little inspired, great! Sharpen your pencils and go draw!